Many addition reactions go non-stereo specifically, and so in this webcast we want to take a look at one such example. We'll look at the addition of HBr to this alkene at cis-3,4-dimethyl-3-hexene. Notice that there's two new stereo centers that can be created by the addition of the elements of H and Br across that double bond. Let's work through the mechanism so we can understand how the stereochemistry comes about. The first step involves the addition of a proton across the carbon-carbon double bond. That's the electrophile association step. And in this very first step, we're going to create the first of two stereocenters. So that sp2 carbon has been transformed into an sp3 stereocenter. We've also created at the other side of this carbon-carbon double bond our carbocation. And that carbocation is going to have the methyl and the ethyl group. Let's go back to that first stereocenter. If the proton adds from one face, we'll end up creating the hydrogen on one side, as it's drawn here in this Fischer projection. And if the hydrogen, if that proton adds to the other face, we'll end up adding the hydrogen to the other side, as the configuration that's shown here in gold represents. And so the new stereocenter that's created in this first step is going to be a mixture of configurations because this proton can approach the top face and the bottom face of this alkene with equal probability. The second stereocenter is introduced in the nucleophile association step. That's where this bromide anion adds in to the carbocation electrophile to generate the final product. That carbocation intermediate is a planar species, so the incoming bromide nucleophile is going to attack the top face and the bottom face with nearly equal probability. As a result of the A sub N step, the bromine could either add in to one side and create one configuration, or the bromine could add in to the other side of that planar carbocation and create the other configuration. And so you can see that the two steps each have the possibility of creating two stereocenters. Altogether, four new stereoisomers can result from these non-stereospecific addition reactions. And so in this webcast, we've seen that planar reactants like alkenes and planar intermediates are going to proceed in non-stereospecific ways. Many other addition reactions, including radical reactions, also involve planar geometries, in which the addition could take place with equal probability from one side or the other. And in those cases, we'll be ending up with stereochemistry that involves mixtures of configurations.